Hey, I'm Mark, and today I'm going to be building a farm table out of some of the stock I have. Um, I cut this in my sawmill and let it dry standing up. It's really straight, but I do have a few pieces that are a little bit warped, a little bit cupped, very minor. So I'm going to run each piece through the sawmill again, leaving my settings on the sawmill exactly the same so the thickness of my finished product uh, is exactly the same. I want to leave it kind of a rough cut look. So let's get to the sawmill. Alright, <clears throat> the next thing I want to do is run the sides that are going to be joined together through the joiner. The outside edges I'm going to leave rough cut and then we'll get that all biscuited and glued together. The next thing I want to do now that I've got them all joined together is take the sander and I want to just knock this edge off of both so that when it's joined together you'll see that line. I want to have a nice visible line. I could do this in the joiner but these boards are so heavy it's just hard to maneuver. Well, let's get those sanded. Alright well next we're going to take the biscuit cutter. I put lines straight across the top of the table. Now all the pieces are big and I'm going to trim it off and put an end board on later. We'll just take the biscuit cutter and line it up. Then cut a matching slot. I only use, <clears throat> the reason I use biscuits on this is not so much for strength but it holds the boards uh, flush to one another while you're clamping it so it don't squirm around while the glue is drying. Well, we'll let the glue dry for a day and get back on it tomorrow. Now that the glue's dried, we're going to take the skill saw and I'll mark the line and just cut the ends off. All right, well, we got the length cut. We're going to cut the end board next and get it all biscuited and glued in. Well, I've got my biscuit pattern laid out. I'm going to put two biscuits in per board double layered one above the other since the ends are going to take such a beating and most abuse through the years. And we got it clamped up. You can see how the the glue came through. We'll let that dry a day and then we'll build. Well, the glue's dry. I got the table upside down. We're going to build the legs and stuff next. All right, what I did, I drew two lines on the floor. This line here represents the bottom of the table. The table's going to be 30 inches tall. Now this is the bottom of the table and this represents the floor and I just laid out the crisscrossing lines, the, the width of the board I'm using. And then took a square, described the lines onto the board, cut them in the, in the uh, cutoff saw and this is what it looks like. So now I'll lay both of these on the lines and we'll take and square and scribe up these lines and we'll dado out half of this board and half of the other so that the two boards uh, interlock with one another.
Well, we got the legs made. You can see how they interlock to where they're flush. Next, I'm going to build a beam that goes through the center about 43 inches from inside to inside and then I have a square peg that will come out with a with a wooden wedge that will hold it together. Well, we'll get started on that beam. Well, next I want to make the beam that goes across the center and I'm going to take and leave about two inches by two inches square uh, we're going to remove all this other material for oh about eight inches or so and uh, then we'll cut a hole in it that we'll drive a wedge in that holds this whole thing together we're going to cut it out with a skill saw and a hand saw all right next since i got the beam built i'm gonna <clears throat> i put an x one here to center it up and I'll just take the pencil and scribe around it. It's not perfectly square. It kind of adds to the uh, look of it being rustic. I labeled it one. Both of these are labeled one on the inside where they interconnect. So it will only go together one way. So we'll get this to the drill press. All right, what I want to do is drill out all four corners with a smaller drill bit. Next, we'll take a portion of it, remove the bulk of the material. All right, I got it put together. Next thing we're going to do is uh, cut a slot in it here for the wedge. I'm going to make the wedge out of a uh, purple heart. It's a deep hardwood that's going to offset it. The color and all. Well, we'll get to cutting that hole out next. Well, I got the wedge in. I used purple heartwood. It's just pretty and I had some scraps of it. Well, next we'll work on the bottom side of the tabletop when we get ready to, to mount it all. Well, I'm not happy with how it looks, so I'm going to change the design a little bit. It's There's too much wood and bulk in here so I'm decided uh, I'm not going to put this in at all and what I'll do is I'll uh, just put a big lag bolt in right here and pre-drill it and all and then I'll add a I'll add an angle bracket to the back side here and I'll paint it the same color of whatever we decide to stain it. And, uh, I think that just gives it a better look and there's less bulk here that might get in the way of your knees all right I like to put wax on the tip of the screw makes it come in and out easier through the years every time I take it apart I'll go ahead and re-wax it That's the table. I still got to sand it. I'm going to sand. Uh, well, I want to leave the saw lines in it uh, to keep it rustic looking. And my daughters will be coming over in a few days and I'm going to have them pick out a stain. Figure out which color they want it to be. I'm kind of leaning towards this one, but we'll see what they like. Well, my daughter picked out the color she wants for her table. She decided to go two-tone. I would have never thought of doing that. She wanted the black ivory, I mean ebony for the top and then a gray for the bottom. Of course, the purple heart wedge, we're going to leave that color and just uh, varnish it. bottom stain I put a number one two three and four so it correspond with the legs when I put it back together I like to 
stain the bottom side and all the unseen parts as well. It just seals it, makes for a better product. All right, next we're going to stain the legs gray. <clears throat> Said I would have never picked two tone, but that's why <clears throat> you let the women decide what they want. Ready to apply apply a polyurethane finish on it, fast drying. I've been waiting on the weather to clear where I can open the barn up, get some good ventilation. I'm going to give it two coats, one now, and I'll come back and give it a good <coughs> sanding after I get it done, a 220 grit sandpaper, and then put the final coat on there. I'm just... Well, there's the finished product. Turned out good. See the saw mark still in the wood. I oh, appreciate y'all watching.